welcome back. So we're going to be talking today about the if statement under section two, Go Programming Language, the basics. So what is an if statement? Well, if statement is one of several statements that fall under full control. We're going to talk about what full control is before we talk about the if statement specifically. Then, of course, we're going to look at some examples of using the if statement. So, so far, if you think about it, all you need to, what you've been doing is writing one statement after the other, whether it's declaring a variable, printing out something on the screen. So your program starts and it executes one statement, then another, then another, and go through until it ends. So it pretty much looks like a straight line like that. And that's pretty boring to do any, in terms of doing anything um, fancy. What you might really want to do is instead of going down a straight line like this, you might want to do something like this in which you get to a point in the program, a statement, and you have to make a decision. Should I go to the left or should I go to the right? And so we call this branching, right? Because you could think of this as a fork in the road of your program, to speak, and you can go take one side or you can take the other side. And so we represent this, here I'm represented by a diamond, and we say that oh, you evaluate some condition. And even though it looks you know, like pretty simple where this condition is just true or false, and once you see true or false, you're already thinking Boolean value, right? Those are the two parts of thing for a Boolean is true or false. And you might think that this is pretty limited, but think about all the ways in which you can get a Boolean value. You can say, if a file is open and still have things to read, let me keep reading values from it. If not, I'm not gonna read anything. Or if today is the fourth day of the week, and 2017, then I do X, Y, and Z. Or if X is greater than Y and Y is greater than 20, then do X, Y, and Z, okay? So even though the condition you're gonna evaluate is going to result in a true or false, that condition can be pretty complex. So it's not as limited as it might first appear. And of course, we, you can use things like and and or to make it even more complex or not and so on. All right, so that is called flow control. So this general idea in which instead of going straight, you can branch and take different branches in your program um, is called flow control because you can think of it as your program, how, controlling how your program flow when it goes this way, when it goes that way, okay? And the most popular one um, that you're gonna see being used or the first one, but the if statement is very popular and common in programming language, is an if statement. and you can use it to do things like this. I call it skip, in which you can be executing some statement, you get that condition, evaluate it, and then if it's true, you might go and do like statement two, then followed by statement three. But then if it's false, you just fall through and, or I shouldn't say fall through, but skip doing statement two and then simply go to three. An example of this might be, if your program first asks for a person's date of birth or age, and then you might determine that in order to fill out the form, so these are statements having to do with filling out the form, and then the first thing you want to do is get date of birth. And you might determine that if the person is on the age, then I need to collect some more information on their parent before asking for the rest of their information. However, if the person is old enough, you might just, you, you would skip asking about parent and just continue to collect the rest of their information. So there's one contrived example of how being able to skip a certain part of your program um, might come in handy, all right? So uh, you take that branch and that's it, okay? Um, another thing you might be able to do is you might say, well, when I get to a certain part in the program, um, if it's true, I wanna go over and do statement two, but if it's false, I wanna do statement three. So in this case, you're doing one or the other. So as your program run, one of these two paths will be executed after statement one and before the statement. It's just which one would depend on the current condition or the condition you're evaluating, whether that's um, some input or whatever. Um, but, you know, it's gonna be different. And so that might look like this, or you might evaluate and take this branch, and then of course you go this way. A more complex um, example, and it sort of builds on um, what we've been talking about before, is that you may evaluate a condition and let's go. You may evaluate a condition and then take A based on if it's, you know, what the results of that condition, and then B otherwise, or then maybe C. 
Now, you may be thinking, that, well, girl, you said back here um, that when you do an if statement, and let's see if I can go back. When you do an if statement, you either get true or false. You just look, you only have two things that you can do. So how is it then that you can end up at this place? Uh, let's see if I can get back there. Come on, come on. How you can end up at a situation like this? It seems that if we would need more than one conditions, you know, if, it, if I can only evaluate a condition, more than one values, if I can only con evaluate a condition and get a true or false, how is it then that I'm able to execute three different branches? And so this breaks down to be something like this. If I evaluate something and it's true, I take A. However, if I evaluate it and it's false, I take this out of, I do another if statement, and if that's true, then I do B. But if it was false, then I do Z. So that's sort of a breakdown of how you can um, be able to um, do multiple branches. It doesn't have to be the single branch that we did. And then of course, when it's all done, you would still do this statement. So again, if my problem is to flow through it, one of these three branches will be taken. And the reason I put Z here is because you can repeat this part here. And this is usually, you can represent this by else, else if, you know, if some condition, then else, if some other condition, else something. Don't worry, we'll see example of the code. I'm just trying to show you, um, you know, sort of graphically what it looks like, and then we'll look at code. So it's time to go look at the code. So let's do that. All right, so here I am in my directory. I created the directory for section seven. I changed it to a change, shorten my prompt a little bit. So I like my like, nice long prompt, but um, for now when I'm coding here in this example, I shorten it. So nothing here. And of course, we're gonna start off by creating a main, that go file. And of course, we're gonna do package main, not panic, package main, and then funct uh, main. And like start off with log print line. And what are we doing? We're doing flow control and the if statement, right? Let's put that statement, all right. Seems like a good place to start. And of course, the sanity check, we expect it to run, but go run main. Eh, um, nope. What's going on? Oh, I'm not in my directory seven. All right, go run main. And so we get exactly what we expect. So yippee. All right, so we're talking about if statement. So what we're gonna pretend is that we write an application and depending on the age of the user who is going we can assume is going to tell the truth. Um, we're going to determine if they should sign up or not, right? Certain actions to take, what we should ask them and so on. So um, let's imagine that the age we have here, we're going to start off with is 25. But we're going to say if um, age is less than, we're doing a test, this is our condition. Well, first of all, I told you I told, um, the if statement uses um, a Boolean value. So um, let's say can sign up. Let's say can sign up is a variable and we're going to set it to true. And we can say if can sign up, then what? Um, FMT print line and print F. Yeah. Um, yes, you can sign up. Okay. And we put a new line for now. Okay, so this is pretty simple, right? We have a condition, a Boolean value here that's gonna get a value by this if statement. And notice it's just if, no open parentheses if you're coming from another language. You don't need to open and close parentheses around your condition um, expression. So here we don't really have an expression, we just have a variable that gets evaluated and its current value is true. So we should expect that when we run this, we should see, yes, you can sign up, um, which makes sense. And of course, if we set this to false and we allow it to save, because I'm lazy, I could do command S or control S if I was in uh, Windows, for example, and I run it. And of course, we do not see, yes, you can sign up because that evaluate to false. So that makes sense. Um, another way we can do a condition is by evaluating an expression. So we can say age gets the value 25. Or we can say if, you know, age is less than, um, less than, 18, right, um, or rather since um, if your age is greater than equals to 18, so if you're um, legally in the United States anyway, you, usually the legal age of consent is 18, 
if your age is greater than or equal to 18, then you can sign up. Right? And so if you run that, we can see, yes, you can sign up because your age um, thing. Yes, you can sign up. And we can do something. You are... Okay. Percentage V years old. And maybe not everyone would be like to be um, reminded of how old they are, but we can assume that our, our users don't care. And so um, if we run this, again, we can see that, oh, yes, you can sign up, you're 25 years old. Okay? All right. So um, we can keep changing this, of course, and say, okay, what if we have a centenary year old? We'll expect to see that, oh, it's not going to work because age 17 is not greater than or equals to 18. So when we run this, of course, they can't sign up. And so what about if we wanted to print a message that says, you know, you're too young to think. So if age is less than 18, we want to say, no, you cannot sign up. Ah. Uh, you are too young to sign up. All right. Um, so you are 20, um, so whatever age old, um, you are too young to sign up. All right, maybe we can rearrange this a little bit. Maybe um, put it this way instead. So cut this, um, put this here, and then bap, bap, bap. Um, so something like that, copy, paste this here, you or something, you can sign up. All right? And so now we have, if age is less than 18, uh, too many um, things. So if age is less than 18, you're too, um, this is your age, you're too young to sign up. And if it's greater than 18, then, you know, bam. And so we run this, and we can see you're 17 years old. You are too young to sign up. And, of course, if we change this back to 25, and we let that save. Uh, there we go. Save. And then we run this, and we can see you're 25 years old. You can sign up. So that seems to be working, but then I have to keep changing this. So this is a way we can get a number every time we run our program. And that is to use the RAN package from Matt.RAN. And so we're going to learn about packages later on, but um, this is an example of how to use the RAN package. Um, so you import the Matt RAN package, and then one of the things you want to do is see the random number generator. What this means is that you give it a starting point. You give it something to, to kind of initialize it. And so if I run this program, I'll see that our oh, magic alibus says, as I can see, it is yes. And if I run this, I'm always get the same value, which is whichever one um, here, as I can see, it is yes here. So somehow, when I seed it with 402, every time I run my program, this is supposed to be random, right? So what was it that I'm always getting the same value? So if I change this and I run it again, we will see uh, I get another number, but if I keep running it, I still get the same number. That's because my seed is exactly the same. So first of all, let's um, import the random number package generator, and we're going to see the random number generator. So I'm going to say ran that seed, and then I'm going to use, I don't know, 51 or something like that, or 11, doesn't matter. Use some number. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then say that I have, and notice once you see the random number generator, you want an integer, you just say um, ran that int, and we'll, 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 we'll just do ran that int and that's going to give us a random number and we're going to print it out of course we're going to see when we run and print it out and there we go and we're going to run it and ooh, look at that that's a really old person because it returns an integer <laughs> and so um it's a 64-bit number and so it's really really big right and if of course if i keep running it i get the same number because my random number generator is seeded with the same thing well, I can make a smaller random number generate um, smaller numbers by using this int n, 
And basically, what I'm going to do is int n. Let's see what int n gives you. Um, blah, blah, blah. There you go. So int n, return as an integer a non-negative number, pseudo-random number. And pseudo-random because you've seen it with the same things. It starts from the same place where it's not quite random. Um, in the range of 0, right? So 0 is included and a value less than n. So if we know that we're talking about age, we should use int n and our cap is, let's say, 150 years. The technology these days, even without modern day technology, we can probably get to be that, but certainly not too crazy. And I can run it now. And now I get, oh, you're 60 years old. And of course, if I keep running it, I'm still going to get 60 because my seed is still 11. Now, what, we would probably like something that every time you run your program, it gives you a different random number. So we need this seed to always change. But what is always changing? That every time, guaranteed, every time we run our program is going to be different. Well, time, of course. So if we say now is equals to time that now, we call the now function, right? And let's go over here and use the time package. And here's the time package. Just include time. And if we do time that now, and so from the time package, we do time that now. It doesn't take any parameter, and it returns this time object. Okay? So we'll have the current time in whatever format time is uh, and time provides all these other functions that you can call notice once you have a time you can call this is the receiver we didn't really do that but we'll explain packages later and receiver function but basically these are all the functions you can call on that time object once you get it and to see if we can use time we go back here and we look at our seed function so let's find seed and C takes an in 64 bit value as its seed. So, is there a function here on our time object that returns an in 64 bit? Yep, Unix Nano and Unix. So, it means that now that we have the time, if we can say now that Unix, Unix, either Unix Nano or just Unix, we're going to get in 64 bit value, and that's going to be our C to our. Um, random number pseudo random number generator and so every time we run we are going to get a different value because time keeps moving and keeps changing and so there you go and so you can see the first time we ran we get 114 the next time we got 74 and 73 so all these are giving us pretty old um, thing nobody's um, under 18 or anything like that but I guarantee you oh there we go we got a three-year-old just as I was about to say I guarantee you if you keep running it you're going to eventually. So if you look, you can see here, you're three years old. You're too um, young to um, sign up. Now, one of the things you might want to be able to do is not have this arbitrary cutoff. Like, you know, if you're 18, you're too young to sign up. If you're greater than 18, um, you know, what we might want to be able to do is say, well, if you're greater than 18, um, you can sign up, um, but, you know, you have a, you know, some kind of, um, uh, let's say we want to be nice to to our seniors and so we want to be able to say if you're over 65 or something like that um, you get some additional benefits if you're greater than older than 65 you get to sign up we don't want to tell them their their age we don't remind them that they're old okay so um, we can say thank you we can say um, thank you for signing up okay and not that older people care about the age much but let's just say we want to say thank you we want to be really nice to our senior seniors and so we're going to take that out um you know we can actually use a print line here and we don't need this again so um so if you are age and let's put a little separation there if your age is less than 18, well, you're certainly too young to sign up. If you're greater than eight, uh, 18, greater than or equals to 18, you can sign up. And, uh, of course, if you're greater than 65, um, you know, we want to say thanks for signing up. So let's run again. And here you are. You are 25 years. You can sign up. Uh, did that save? Um, right. And 39. And... And... Oh, geez. And thank you for signing up, right? 
Ah, but look at this. Is this what we really want? We said that we don't want uh, the older people to see uh, their age, right? Once you're over 65. But here it says you're 95 years, you can sign up. And also, thank you for signing up. So it seems what's happening is if you're older than 65, this gets triggered, which is true. You're greater than 18 to be sure. But it's, this also triggers this. This is because they're independent if statement. So what it seems like we really want is an else to say, if you're greater than 18, if you're less than 18, or if your age is less than 18, you do this, and then you do not execute the rest of, um, of the, the program. If you're not 18, we want to check and see, are you greater than 18? And if you're greater than 18, then, um, you know, or maybe if you're less than 65, then if we know that you're, sorry, let me do that again. We check and see if you're less than 18. If you're less than 18, print this. We don't check anything else. If this is false, right, we take the other branch. If it's false, we want to check and see if you're less than 65. If you're less than 65, so if you're here, less than 65, then less than 65, then we're going to print this message. And if you're greater than or equal to 65, then we print this message. And so now, if we run our program, we could see 50 years old, 39, and then, oh, that looks like what we want. But we still have this thing where we have to evaluate each and every one of these functions. This functions get evaluated, it's false. This one get evaluated. In the case of this last one, we don't know what age that is, but we know it certainly was either 65 or more. It had to evaluate this function. Oh no, I had to evaluate this function, and this if statement, and evaluate this one. There's something called else, which means do this. If this fails, do the other one. And so we can actually do else, um, fmt that print f, or we can say you are older than you are of illegal age. And we don't say what that legal age is because if you're not, if you're under 18, we would have done this. Else, it means that you're legal age. So only one of these two functions is going to be printed out. And then, of course, we're going to do this, right? So your legal age, and, you know, or we can say you can sign up. And then we probably want to do something like, you know, thanks for signing up. Well, you know, for the older people, maybe we want to say if you're, um, you know, older, we want to say thanks for signing up. And so we run the program and you can say um, thing. Oh, there we go. Uh, we need to put a new line. Okay. And let that save and we run it. And now what we know here is that this person was greater than 18, 18 year or older, but less than 65, because all we said was thank you for signing up. We did not um, say that, we did not say um, thank you. So we know that how they, they weren't 65 and older. Now, let me wrap this up before this gets very, very long. Um, so the else statement allows you to do one of these two things, but you can do also else if. So one of the things we could do is if the age is less than 18, do one thing. Else if the age is less than 65, do something else. You know, like, hey, awesome to have you sign up. Else, thank you for signing up. All right. And so for those people who are between 18 and 64, we say, hey, awesome to have you. And the people who are older, because if you are not this and you're not this, then you must be this. OK. Um, we can say thank you, seniors. All right. And so we it's essentially one if statement with multiple um, other conditions that we can test. And you could have many else if you don't have to have this one only. We can say, for example, 
we want to identify people who are centurions. And so we can do something like this. We can say, you know, uh, if your age is less than, um, if you are equal, exactly equals to 100, you know, or even if you're greater than, uh, greater than equals to 100, uh, sorry, let's do this less than 100. Um, thank you, senior. And then we know that if you get to this else part, you're older than 100. All right. And so now when we run this, only one of those functions say, hey, awesome to have you sign up. We know that our you are between eight, you're 18 to 64. Well, let's run again. Thank you, seniors. We know that you're here. You're 65 to uh, and less than 100. Let's run again. Hey, awesome to have you sign up. We know that uh, um, you're again here. So let's see if we can get um, you are awesome message only. Uh, uh, you are awesome. So this person must have been greater than 100 years old. Does that make sense? So I hope this is not too confusing. I don't want it to be too long, so I'm going to cut it here. If you have questions, please let me know, but do practice and play with this. Again, the if statement is your friend. <laughs> you're going to use it many times. You're going to see it many times. Okay. So I hope this example was decent and with the chart, it helps you to solidify things. So let's wrap up and conclude what we have learned so far. We got to see the escapement in a number of ways. We got to see it use the skip code and run alternate paths. So if one thing is true, else run something else. And we got multiple if statement and um, you know, then the nest is, nested is if else. And so hopefully you feel pretty comfortable with the if statement after watching both the illustration graphically and then get into play with some code. If you still don't feel comfortable with your statement, please practice or leave me some comments, messages, and um, I'll try again. Or just check out the language documentation um, on the Golang website, golang.org. Okay, that's it. I'm going to cut this off here. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it always. Thank you for subscribing and taking the time to subscribe. I do appreciate you taking the time to do that. I also thank those of you who were spreading the word because I know that some other people have joined as a result and started subscribing and watching the video as a result of people spreading the word. So thank you also. And for you who haven't told anyone yet or subscribed, please do. And I'll continue to make videos. I love it and I want to get better at it. So I welcome feedback, both good and bad. I know um, someone had some issues with the video quality. I'm trying to figure out exactly what that is and how I can fix that. So please bear with me while I address any issues that you might be seeing. But again, thanks and have a great time. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy Formula and Go. Take care. Bye. See you in the next video where we're going to look at the switch statement.